The upper right-hand corner is a picture of a battery cage, which is how most of the egg-laying hens in this country still live, packed so tightly they can't even stretch their wings. And they will live this way for about a year before they're then killed. And sometimes they're used for low-grade meat products like chicken pot pies or sometimes for pet food. But their bodies are beaten up. There's not a lot of meat on their bones. So in some cases, the slaughterhouses don't even want them anymore, especially because they have this large supply of these heavier meat birds. So for the slaughterhouse, it's not profitable to operate and kill these spent laying hens, which is what they call them, because there's not a lot of meat there. And there are situations where egg factories have a hard time getting rid of their spent hens because slaughterhouses don't want them. And there was a situation in California a few years back where an egg factory in San Diego had 30,000 spent hens that they had to get rid of. They couldn't find a slaughterhouse, so they got a wood chipper. And they were throwing live hens in this wood chipper. A neighbor saw this, uh, contacted us and other organizations. We contacted the local authorities. We tried to have them prosecuted for cruelty to animals. But we were told that this was an acceptable and legal practice. It's a normal agricultural operation. And that's something most people don't realize. Farm animals are excluded from the Federal Animal Welfare Act. Farm animals are excluded from many state anti-cruelty laws. So as long as the industry starts doing something, it's considered to be a normal practice. And no matter how cruel or upsetting it is, it's considered to be legal in states that have these normal agricultural exemptions. And most US states do. Lower, uh, lower left-hand corner is a picture of a dairy cow in a milking parlor. Dairy cows, in order to produce milk and be profitable today, have a calf every year, and they have a nine-month gestation period. So that is a constant strain on their body. And you multiply that strain because they are producing about 10 times more milk than they would produce in nature during their lactation. So the average year in the life of a dairy cow would be something like this. January 1st, she gives birth. Uh, then they t milk the colostrum out for a, a day or two, and then she goes into the milk stream. And then she's hooked up to milk machines two or three times a day to produce enormous quantities of milk, again, ultimately producing 10 times more than normal. And then from January to March, she's in this production cycle. In March, she's re-impregnated because they want her to uh, have a calf and begin a new cycle because the lactation cycle, you know, milk production increases, then it peaks and it starts going down. And they want to keep her at maximum production. So she's impregnated in March, and for the next seven months, she'll be giving milk at this ex intense level and pregnant. Two months before giving birth, they will dry her off, which means they will stop milking her so that she can be reconditioned, which means she can put some more weight on her bones so that when she has the next calf, she can go into another cycle. So in a healthy environment, a cow could live 20 years. But on these modern dairy farms, they're sent to slaughter after just three years in production, sometimes less, because they're spent, they're worn out. Most of their life is spent in what's called a state, uh, a state of negative energy balance. They cannot eat enough to keep the weight on their bodies. That's why oftentimes dairy cows have been fed uh, high energy concentrates. And in the past, that used to include slaughterhouse byproducts, including parts of cows, which contributed to the spread of mad cow disease. And so now that uh, practice has been limited to some extent, but um, that's what the life of a dairy cow is. And then after they're no longer considered to be profitable in milk production, they're sent to slaughter and usually used for beef. And then the picture at the lower right is pigs that are used for breeding. These are female breeding pigs in gestation crates, which are two foot wide enclosures where they live pretty much their whole lives, unable to walk, to turn around. Um, and right before giving birth, they move them to a separate crate called a farrowing crate, where the sow also just has a two feet of space but there's a little space on the side for the piglets. So when the mother lays down, the piglets can nurse through the bars. And they'll be kept there for about three weeks, and then the piglets are weaned, raised for slaughter, killed at six months old. The mother is immediately re-impregnated, put right back in the gestation crate. So she lives this constant cycle of impregnation, birth, re-impregnation. 
And then when she's no longer profitable, just like the dairy cows, she sent to slaughter and used for meat. Uh, and just like the spent hens from the egg industry, oftentimes her body is beat up and worn out. I remember in the early days going to um, the uh, South St. Paul Stockyard in Minnesota, and, and the Midwest is a large pork producing area, and they had a pen there called the pizza pen because it's where the worn out, beat up, spent sows went and they would be ground up and turned into pepperoni and other ground up products. So they called this the pizza pen because this is where the, the beat up, uh, worn out animals were, were kept. So this is the kind of stuff we saw. And thankfully, there has been some progress. For years, we've tried to pass legislation to outlaw some of this cruelty. But what would tend to happen is we would get a bill introduced. It would be, re be referred to the Agriculture Committee, either in a state capital like Sacramento or in Washington, D.C., and the Agriculture Committee tends to be made up of lawmakers who represent agricultural districts and agricultural interests. So they were very unfriendly to our concerns. So what we did in 2000 is we took this issue to the people. We did this for the first time in Florida. Uh, first, we introduced a bill. Uh, it was introduced in Tallahassee, referred to the Agriculture Committee, and died without even getting a hearing. So then we went to the people, and Florida has an initiative. There's about 22 states in the US where citizens can collect signatures to put a measure on the ballot for a popular vote. So that's what we did. And we were able to collect the signatures to be on the ballot in Florida in 2002. And the effort sought to ban gestation crates for breeding pigs, these two foot wide enclosures. And Florida voters voted to ban gestation crates. We then went to Arizona. And in addition to the gestation crates, we added veal crates for calves and Arizona voters voted to ban veal crates and gestation crates. Then we came to California in 2008. And in addition to gestation crates and veal crates, we added battery cages for egg laying hens. And most people don't realize it, but California is the number one agricultural state in the US. Uh, it's one of the top uh, six or so egg producing states in the US. So there were 20 million hens in California in these battery cages. So this was going to be a massive battle. And we were a little bit concerned because people also tend not to relate to chickens as easily and readily as they relate to mammals like calves and pigs. And there is, I think, a prejudice in a sense. And the less like us somebody else is, the more difficult it can be for us sometimes to understand them. And this is why, you know, in the case of primates or chimpanzees, you know, we recognize they're, they're not that different than us. And then when we look at dogs and cats and cows and pigs, they're mammals like we are. So we also can look into their eyes and it's more familiar to us. Then we start talking about chickens. They're a little different. So it's a little harder for us to understand them in the same way. And then fish are even more different. But the more that we look at these other creatures and the more that we, that scientists look at their cognitive and emotional lives, the more we see how rich they are and that there is someone there. And the more we look at this, the more disturbing it is what we put these animals through. Um, so it is important, but, but there's not a lot of incentive on the part of agriculture or our society generally to look at these issues because it's disturbing and it's gonna cause us to wanna to make changes, hopefully. And there's a large infrastructure in place right now that supports our animal, meat, uh, industrial complex. And the media is part of it, the financial institutions are part of it, tax policies are part of it. We worked on a, a bill years ago in California with Senator Roberti, who was a president pro tem of the state Senate in California at the time. And we were able to pass a bill here to ban the marketing of downed animals, animals too sick to stand. And these are, again, cows that are being dragged off to slaughter to be used for human food. And we argued that these animals should either be humanely euthanized or given proper veterinary care. Sick and diseased animals should not be slaughtered and used for human food. But we were able to get some legislation passed here in California. And Roberti talked about how passing that law was, was, and the agriculture industry put up more of a fight and was, was more difficult to contend with than the oil industries and the banking industries. So agriculture is deeply entrenched and it is connected with the oil industry. Um, it is connected with the pharmaceutical industry. It is connected with finance. It is connected with 
property and land and tax laws. And agriculture gets preferential access to scarce resources like water. They pay less than market value. So this is an industry that is deeply embedded uh, in our policies uh, in Washington, D.C. and also in Sacramento and in our media and in our daily practices. And most people are unwittingly buying these products, supporting this industry without recognizing the harm they're causing. And there's enormous harm. And so at Farm Sanctuary, we have rescued animals from these kinds of places and we let them enjoy lives.